Good morning everyone! Katulad pa rin ng dati, we start our service, we start our live streaming. Una, gusto kong bumati. Happy birthday, Pastora Beng! Birthday niya sa 5, sa Wednesday. And also sa 6, kay Cynthia. Cynthia Llamas, happy birthday ning. Happy birthday sa inyong dalawa. And God bless you. So let's pray. Father God, I thank you for another wonderful day. It may be raining, Lord, but thank you where you have given us a magandang panahon so that we can enjoy, Lord, yung not just the warmth, but Lord, even yung cool time sa mga buhay namin. When, when we needed, Lord God, something to refresh our heated bodies, we thank you for giving us cool air. And thank you for another day, Lord God, that you will pour upon us a spirit of wisdom and understanding. Thank you for another day to hear from you, Lord God, another grace to receive from you wisdom, another grace, dear God, to be able to learn from your word. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, for the great teacher, Lord, as we embark on another journey. Thank you, dear God, for the grace and the strength to move with you. Thank you for another journey. This we pray in Christ Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Konting review lamang po. Nag, nag-message na po ako sa ating, sa family, Jalsi family, na na minsan, pag kung ini-English ko ang lesson natin, may mga request po. Just like today, may God give you an understanding to forgive me and to just walk with me in this journey. So review lamang po. And napag-aralan, we, we learn in the, the last few meetings, last few live streaming, that God blessed Abraham. We talk about the mystery of tithing. When we withhold our tithes, what happens to us? But God blessed Abraham. When God blessed Abraham, Abraham became a blessing. When the Lord promised him, I will bless you and I will make you a great nation and you will be a blessing. Abraham has to have that blessing in himself before he became a blessing to the nations of the world. And then the Lord said, whoever curse you, I will curse. I will curse him who curses you. So it's not right. It is not it is not right to speak ill of your leaders, to speak ill of your pastors. Because the Lord said, I will curse him who curses you. The word curse in Hebrew is arar, meaning to disable. Because you have dishonored your spiritual, your leaders, you will be dishonored and you will be under spell. When you are under there under a spell, you no longer have control of your mind. You no longer have control of your decision making. And then the Lord said, I will curse him who curses you. And then because you have dishonored your spiritual father, you will become insignificant until you return to the Lord in true repentance. So tithe is an ancient mystery of dominion. And we learned that Abraham activated the promises of God in his life by giving a tithe of all to Melchizedek. Nabasa po natin yon. Tithes activates the blessing. Blessings in you commands all creation to respond to you. Commands all creation to give to you. Commands all creation to yield their produce to you. So the blessing in you activates dominion in your life. That's why Satan fights tithing. That's why Satan doesn't want us to tithe. Because he understands. He understands that tithing plays a significance in our lives. So every time we do not tithe, the earth is authorized to harass us, as I said last time. Because when the earth was cursed and when Adam fell into sin, he was sent out of the garden to a world that is now 
hostile to him. When Adam sinned before God, he was sent out into the world. It were a world that was hostile to him, a world where he was a stranger. Okay? So withholding or not giving our tithes, we are violating the principle of exemption. Alam natin ang mga churches, we are exempted from paying our tithes. Except when that, you know, I will not talk to the, I will not talk about it, but when we are withhold when we withhold our tithes, when we do not give our tithes, we are we are violating the principle of exemption. So every time we don't tithe, we are signing a covenant of poverty, a document that we are handing over our harvest to anyone. It is a document in the realm of the Spirit when we withhold our tithes, we are signing a document that we are handing our harvest to someone. Okay? Isaiah 28, in verse 15 to 19, I will read from the message version. It says there, the Lord said, you say in your heart, we've taken out, this, this is when we withhold our tithes, when we decide, when we think of holding our tithes, withholding our tithes. The Lord said in verse 15, Isaiah 28, from the message Bible, you say we've taken out good life insurance. We've hedged all our bets, covered all our bases. No disaster can touch us. We've thought of everything. We're, ad we're advised by the expert. Therefore, we're set. Okay? Because someone, someone influenced you not to give your tithes. Somebody told you not to give your tithes. Then, uh, Message Bible tells us, you think of your tithe as your in, uh, insurance policy. In verse 17, the Lord said, I'll make justice the measuring stick and righteousness the plumb blind for the building. A hailstorm will knock down the shantown, shanty town of lies and a flash flood will wash out the rubble. Whatever we are building on, whatever we are we are building because we withhold we withhold our tithes for something else to build something that we have planned to build. The Lord said, "Whatever you are building, I will send down a, a hailstorm to destroy, and a flash flood will wash out every debris, every rubble of what you are building." Then the Lord said in verse 18, 18, Then you'll see that your precious life insurance policy wasn't worth the paper it was written on. Your careful precautions against death were a pack of illusions and lies. When disaster happens, you'll be crushed by it. Okay? Sabi ni Lord, you will see. you the... Um, the consequence of withholding your tithes. And then the Lord said, you think you are being careful, you think you are preparing for the time when you get sick, you have something to shell out from your pocket to finance your sickness. So we are actually, when we are withholding our tithes, we are actually preparing for that sickness to attack us. Okay? In verse 19, every time disaster comes, you'll be on it. Disaster in the morning, disaster at night. Every report of disaster will send you covering in terror. There will be no place where you can rest, nothing to hide under. The Lord said, because you withheld your tithe, every time there is a disaster, you will be affected by it. Sabi ni Lord, disaster in the morning, disaster at night, at bawat balita na maririnig mo, every news, every report that you will hear about all these disasters, magtatago ka because you are afraid of this terror. This is not the Lord's purpose, this is not the Lord's plan for us, but the Lord said, 
even James, what it, was it James na nagsabing, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of a sound mind? That's why the enemy fights us on legal ground. And we know tithing is legal ground. Creation fights non-tithers. The Lord said, why did Jesus wanted us, encourage us to pay our, pay our tithes? Because the Lord said, there is a devourer. And a devourer is a spirit that causes poverty. It is a spirit that creates mysterious accidents. It is a spirit that allowed you, that confronts you and give you failures. Present to you disappointments. And he is the one also that causes cycles of misfortunes. God wants us to confront this devourer by paying our tithes. So, the remedy of removing the curse, ano po ang pwede natin gawin to remove the curse? Give God His portion, and that is paying our tithes. When the Lord said, Prove me now if I will not open to you the windows of heaven. And we understood that the word window open. God was saying, your, your tithes, your tithes will prepare, will plow, will prepare the way, will prepare the path for your increase. And then the Lord said, windows, the word windows is Aruba in Hebrew, which means it is a chimney, a fireplace, where, wherein it speaks to us, you, your tithes, our tithes, is a prayer in itself. So our tithes speaks to God, our tithes speaks to God, and our offering will speak to us. So let's talk about the mystery of the seed. We'll talk about offering this time. We just finished about the mystery of deity. We'll talk about the mystery of the seed that we saw. Okay? Second uh, Corinthians chapter 9. Second Corinthians chapter 9. Let's start with verse 6. Therefore, the Paul said, Therefore, I thought it necessary. Okay, let me open my Bible. Second Corinthians chapter 9. In verse 6, okay, verse 6, Paul said, no, not verse, num, verse 5, verse 5, let's start with verse 5. Paul said, therefore I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren to go to you ahead of time. And prepare your generous gifts beforehand, which you had previously promised that it may be ready as a matter of generosity and not as a grudging obligation. Paul was talking now about offering. He said, I thought it necessary. Our offering connects us to the economy of heaven. Okay? Our offering will connect us to the economy of heaven. Your tithes prepare the way, the path for the blessing to come to us. So our offering now will connect us to the economy of heaven. Paul said it is necessary. I thought it necessary. The word, the word necessary in Greek is anagkaios. A-N-A-G-K-A I-O-S, anagkayos, which means one cannot do without the other. One cannot do without the other. That means you have given, you have paid your tithes, but there is no offering. You can give your offering, but if you are not, you have not paid your tithes, wala rin pong mangyayari. Because there is no way you have given your offering, but your seed, wala pong, there is no prepared path for the seed, for the harvest to flow to you. Okay? Because your, as I said, your tithes will prepare the path 
will prepare the way for the harvest to flow through you. So the word necessary means one cannot do without the other, meaning you have paid your tithes to God. Your tithes prepared the way. Your tithes gave you a land. Your tithes gave you the right path for your blessing, for your harvest to come. But you see, if you may have a fertile ground, you may have a fertile land, you have plowed it, you have prepared the ground, but if you will not sow any seed in that ground, you will not receive any harvest. Okay? So, pagano man kaganda, gaano man kalusog ng lupa, nag-ikapu lamang po tayo, ang sabi natin, ang ikapu, inihanda lang niya ang daan para yung ating mga pagpapala dumaloy na sa atin because the word, yung ating mga, mga sa Ephesians 1, 3, our blessings are located in the heavenly places. The word heavenly places is shamayim, meaning where the waters are. So uh, our our blessings are still in the spirit realm, in the where the waters are. So we need the flow of the river to come to us. At ang flow ng river na ito dapat isang direction lang. Okay, as I said, gaano man kalusog ang lupa, pero kung wala kang itinanim dito, walang binihi na itinanim sa lupa, wala kang aanihin. Or pwede ka rin namang may lupa ka, pero hindi siya na-prepare, hindi siya, hindi siya nalinis, walang daan for the harvest to come to you. Ang sabi pa rin ng Biblia, nagtanim ka ng magandang binhi. Okay, the wheat, remember the parable of the wheat and the tares. Yung wheat na ito, pagdating na ng pagtutubo, sinasakal siya ng mga tares, ng mga dawag. Why? Kasi hindi po nabigyan ng tamang daan, ng tamang paglilinis ang lupa natin. So now, imahalaga, sabi ni Pablo, it is necessary that I exhort to you, brethren, the word exhort is to give us an instruction. Exhort is to give us an instruction on the right, on the attitude of our sowing the seed. Ang sabi ni, ni Pablo, para maging handa kayo sa inyong pagbibigay, a matter of generosity. That means, yung willing ang puso na, there is a willingness in your heart to sow that seed. There is a joyful, there is a cheerful attitude in our hearts, in our minds, that we are giving the seed. We are sowing, we are planting the seed. And the word, and Paul said, that you will give this because you are ready as a matter of generosity and not as grudging obligation. The word grudging obligation in Greek is pleonexia. Pleonexia with a thought na huwag ninyong isipin ay ang takaw naman ng, sa pera ni pastor. Ang takaw naman sa pera ni pastor, meron ng tithes manghihingi pa ng offering. This is what grudging obligation means. Yung mag-iisip ka, that's why Paul said it is important that I give you this instruction that when you sow your seed, you are not to have this mind that I am giving, that I am giving because the pastor is extorting from us. Because the word grudging obligation came from two words, plenoxia, pleonexia is two words avaris and extortion. Na unang iniisip natin, matakaw sa pera si pastor, kaya hingi ng hingi. And then also with another thought, na tinatakot kami ni pastor na hindi kami pagpapalain pag di kami nagtanim. Hindi po ito, this is not the word of the pastor, this is not the heart of the pastor, because this is the word of the heart of God where Paul presented the truth the significance of our sowing the seed. Okay? Sowing a seed, which we call our offering. This is the mystery of your seed. The seed of tithes and the seed of offering. And then, 
In verse 7, we say, in verse 7, in verse 6, He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Ang nagtanim ng kakaunti, actually, yung word na sparing, hindi po ibig sabihin kaunti. Kaya nga lamang po in Tagalog, we use the word kaunti because parang we're, we're actually have this idea na kailangan bountiful ang, bountiful ang itanim mo. But the word sparing in Greek, okay, is spiro. One is spiro, which means idea of extending as one receives seed. Okay, the word so, the word so is spiro. Yung nagtanim ka, with that understanding that every seed you have in your hand, hindi naman talaga galing sa iyo originally. You did not produce this seed, but someone, some, some divine hand, binigyan po tayo, gave us the seeds to sow. The word sparingly is pedomenos, meaning is menos, which means yung binigay mo something that you do not want. Yung nagmaramot ka, yung you kept the best to yourself. Yun po ang, that is what sparingly means, the best seed you kept for yourself. What you do not need, what, what we call our extra. Yung extra na lamang po ang ating binibigay bilang offering. Okay? Sabi ni Lord, He who sows sparingly, therefore, anuman what you spare, will be kept. Anong sminer mo, nasa iyo lang. But, God, you will also reap a spared harvest. Kaya you, you, you gave your seed you sow your seed, pero you do not receive a good harvest. Why? Check our offering. Check our giving. Because the word says if we sow sparingly, if we have spared the best for ourselves, how can we expect the best harvest to be given to us? Of course, our harvest will also be a spared harvest. Yung parang mababang quality lang. But and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. The word bountifully din po in Greek does not mean napakarami, malusog. But the word bountifully in Greek is the word epi. E-P-I, which means Superimposition of time. Superimposition of time with the dative case. Okay. Bountifully is epi in Greek, which means superimposition of time with the dative case, which means na yung seed na ito the origin of the seed that you receive has an instruction dating back to creation days. Whatever instruction the, the seeds receive from creation days, mababasa natin Genesis 1, 11, 12. Genesis chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. It says there, God gave the seed and every seed produces the same kind as it has been sown. Therefore, if we have sown 1,000 as our offering, yung hundredfold return, hindi po tagpa 500 but also in thousands. If you sow in hundreds, it will also come to you in hundreds because the word of God, ang sabi po rito, the word bountifully, superimposition of time, 
with the dative case na ang seed na ito has already an instruction. You do not have to pray for the seed to give you the harvest because your, this will be your word against God's word. God already instructed every seed. God already instructed every seed to give you a harvest of the same kind. So every seed has been charged of producing the same fruit. Okay? So, and it says there, let's continue. So let each one in verse 7, let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Let each one give as he purposes in his heart. The word purposes in his heart is pro airiomai. Pro airiomai, meaning to bring forth from one store, to, to choose for one's self before another. As he purposes in his heart. The word purpose in his heart in Greek has the idea that when you are sowing your seed, you have in your mind that you will benefit the good harvest. It's like parang you are preparing a meal for your family. You are cooking a meal for your family. Of course, you will cook your food that your family will enjoy. Not for your neighbor's benefit, but your family's benefit. Yun po yung sinasabi dito as he purposes in his heart that you will know when you are selecting your something to wear. Okay? Yung magbibihis ka, pupunta ka, you're going to a party. Of course, you will not dress yourself in rags, but you will dress yourself something that will please you, not to please others, but to please you that will make you comfortable. The word, so the word purposes is to give us a comfortable harvest, something that will please us, something that will satisfy our expectation. Okay? And the word not grudgingly, not grudgingly in Greek is lupe, L-U-P-E, lupe, which means you're not annoyed, you're not in mourning, you're not sad, not heavy. Hindi ka naiinis na nagbibigay ka, hindi ka, wala kang kaisipan na parang namatayan ka, na nawalan ka, kaya malungkot ka dahil nag-offering ka, hindi ka nalulungkot dahil parang isip mo, nakapagbigay na naman ako, and then hindi mabigat sa puso mo. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng grudgingly, na hindi ka nagtatampo yun. But the word grudgingly is four words, hindi ka inis, you're not in mourning, you're not sad, and you're not heavy. Okay? Or ang sabi pa ni Paul, or of necessity, para bang ginawa mo na lang ito, you're just sowing your seed out of your religious duty. Na ito ay duty ko na lang. Na ito ay dapat kong gawin. No. When you are giving your offering, you know, kaya Paul said, God loves a cheerful giver because a cheerful giver is not thinking, I am sowing my seed because this is what the law says. I am giving my seed. Because I understand with my seed, I will be the one, I will be the one to receive the harvest for my good seed. Okay? So, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God loves a cheerful giver. And the word loves, for God loves a cheerful giver is agapao. Agapao. Agapao, as I said, to welcome, your offering is to welcome, it pleases you, and because it pleases you, it entertains God. And because God is also is well pleased, you now become, God gives you the grace to be content. 
As you wait, God gives you the grace to be content. But the word cheerful does not mean tawa ka ng tawa, laughing all the way while giving your seed. No. The word cheerful is helios. H-I-L-E-O-S, which means prompt, merciful, gracious. Yung maagap kang magbigay, hindi kailangan not, you don't need someone to tell you so your seed, no. Because the word cheerful means you are early, you are prompt. You don't need anyone to tell you because out of your heart, out of the abundance of that love that you have for God, You are giving out of that knowledge that everything is came from God. You give from your heart. Okay? Verse 8, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Meron po ba kayang Bible sa inyo? Do you have your Bibles with you? In verse 8, it says that God is able to make all grace abound to you. The word all, all grace, the word all in Greek is pas. P-A-S, which means each, every, any, all, all types. Lahat ng kakailanganin mo, lahat ng mga need mo, kasama sa grace na ito, sa iyong pagbibigay. Lahat ng grace na ito, even the grace to sow our seed. Even sowing our seed is a grace from God. And He said, this grace will cause things to abound to you. The word abound, and the Lord said, your, your seed will see to it the seed that you have sown. It will see to it that you will receive a harvest beyond, a harvest that will exceed a fixed number of measure. It will exceed beyond your expectation and then also that you always having sufficiency in all things the word always in Greek is pantote kunti-kunti lamang po yung mga mahalagang words lamang po ang kinuha ko yung word na always po in Greek is pantote na ibig sabihin there God will not allow you that at any time you will lack. God will not allow, but He will cause every time you will need, God provides. So the word always, pantote, means every when, at all times. Okay? Sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. The word work In Greek is ergon, which means business. God will cause your business to abound. God will cause everything, anything that you, you are being occupied with. It could be your work, any kind of work. God will cause your work. God will cause you to be fruitful. God will cause you to be favored in your business in the place where you are working. In verse 9, as it is written, He has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His, he has dispersed abroad. The word dispersed abroad means a watch, an observer. Distant mark looked at the end one has in view meaning when God when you sow your seed when sowing your seed when you sow your seed with understanding you have God said he has dispersed abroad God will see to it 
that he, because he said he is observing our seed, where you sow your seed, where you planted your seed, where you scattered your seed, God is watching and he observes the growth, the maturing of that seed. And at the same time, with that seed, because that seed is marked in the realm of the Spirit, God has already an end in His mind to give to you. Meron nang inihanda ang Diyos na ibabalik sa iyo. So every seed that we sow, because the word dispersed abroad, He watches over our seed. He observes our seed. At meron nang mark ang mga seed na ito. Every seed you sow is marked. When that seed is sown, with, a, with cheerfulness, okay? And then, He has given to the poor. The word poor, hindi po ito yung mahirap talaga as we understand poor because the word poor in na ginamit po dito sa verse na ito is the word pipto, P-I-P-T-O, which means fall prostrate to humble, meaning, Every seed you sow in humility, in gratitude. Yung nagpapakumbaba ka, nagbigay ka, you gave your offering, you give your offering because of your love for God, because of your worship to God, because of your understanding that this is not mine. I have nothing I can give to God. I will give to God because I love God. Your the attitude of your giving as you as you fall yourself humbly before God, as you fall prostrate before God, God will see to it. Not only He watches our seed, not only He observes our seed, but the word also pipto means to fly. God's gonna increase to the point na hindi mo na maaabot yung mga blessings na darating sa iyo. You cannot catch your blessing. That means, basta darating na lang sa iyo, it will just fall to you, it will just come to you. Okay? Ang sabi pa, okay, His righteousness endures, endures forever. Now may He who supplies in verse 10, now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Tingnan nyo, yung move ni Lord. He supplies the seed to us. Okay? Malina po, this is clear in verse 10. Someone has supplied the seed to the sower. We are the sower, we are the hands that receives the seed. But there is one that supplied the seed. And then as we receive, as we receive, we now learn to sow. Okay? To sow the seed. The move of God is, as we sow the seed, He will continue to supply not only supply, but multiply the seed we have sown. Not only will God continue to supply, but He will also continue to multiply the seed, and then He will multiply the seed, and then our produce, our harvest, will be increased. Because it says there, multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Multiply the seed. Multiply the seed sown. And the word multiply, <laughs> the word multiply in Greek is pletuno. Pletuno. P-L-E-T-H-U-N-O. Pletuno which means to abound, na ang ibig sabihin to works transitively or intransitively. Meaning, 
the seed nag harvest ka na now from that harvest you will get the best seed not to keep the best seed but to sow again the best seed meaning the seed that you are sowing again the seed that you are about to sow again this is what we call transit seed transit seed meaning a seed that is in motion palipat lipat gumagalaw buhay ang seed mo okay nag-ani ka kinuha mo the best ani tinabi mo para sa susunod na pagtatanim at pag itinanim mo ulit yung seed na ito tinatawag na ito na transit seed na ibig sabihin transit parang di siya nakatambay lang but yet out of that harvest meron kang kinuha pang tanim meron ka ring itinabi you kept something for yourself at the seed that you keep for yourself is what we call in transit seed or in this seed is called in transitively meaning andun lang siya but still it is protected by the lord transit and in transit seed okay What you sow is protected. What you keep, still protected. So that the Lord said, you will increase the fruit of your righteousness. The word increase means to cause to grow. God will cause your, in, your seed, your harvest to become greater. And the word fruit means the produce of the earth. And righteousness, a life that is acceptable to God. A life that is acceptable to God. That's why in Luke chapter 6 verse 38, mababasa natin doon, Give and it shall be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over will men put into your bosom, for with the same measure, that you use, it will be measured back to you. Sabi rito, give. Meaning, the word give, when God gives you, give. Kung walang binigay sa iyo, wala kang may bibigay. That's why when God, when the Lord commanded give, because Jesus has this idea that God will not leave you na zero. God will always give you something. Okay? So God, give and it will be given to you good measure. The word good means surpassing all that you have given. More than what you have given. Press down, shaken together, running over will men. It, your, your, your harvest will not come from heaven. But heaven will cause men because your harvest will come from man. Will, will come from men. And because the word says here, running over will men put into your bosom. Men will give that to you. Ang tao ang magbibigay sa iyo ng harvest. God will cause men to be favorably generous to you. Itong mga taong ito kakausapin ng Diyos para magbigay sa iyo. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Sabi ni Lord kung ano ang takal ng pagbibigay mo, ibabalik din niya sa iyo ng sobra sa inaasahan mo. When you ask God for financial breakthrough, you God demands something, demands something from you. Okay? So, sabi po rito, man will give, will put into your bosom. Ibibigay ng tao ang tao ang magbibigay sa iyo. Pansinin natin, yung offering na ito. When you want God plans a breakthrough for you, God first demands something from you. Sa 1 Kings chapter 17, alam na natin ang kwento na ito, tungkol kay Elijah at yung balo sa Sarifa. 
Okay? Alam natin that this widow has nothing. She had her last food, last piece of meal to eat with her son, pero dumating pa ang propeta na ito. At ang ginawa pa, instead na sinabi ng propeta, encourage sana yung widow na ito, sige, lutuin mo na yan and let us pray for your food na i-multiply ni Lord. Hindi. Iba ang nasa utak ng prophet. Minsan, prophets are, you cannot understand the words, the instruction of the prophets because prophets move according to the word of God, according to the Lord's instruction. That is why when Elijah, because there was famine in the land, God sent Elijah to a poor widow. To a widow in Sarifa. Okay? And alam natin, we can read sa, sa kwento, sa story na ito, that Elijah nakita niya ang babaeng ito gathering yung panggatong because this woman was about to cook her last meal before she would wait wait for her death and her, her son. Okay? So, anong sabi ni Elijah? Sabi niya, bigyan mo muna ako ng tubig para uminom ako. Alam natin, there was famine. Okay? So, Elijah asked first for water to quench his thirst. And then, as she was going to get it in verse 11, he called to the woman and said, Please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. Please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. Sa kamay mo, hindi sa pinggan. Ibang klase, no? So she said, As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bean and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first, and bring it to me, and afterward make some for yourself and your son. Linaw ng instruction. The instruction was so clear. Elijah said, with that little flour in your hand, make first, cook first a small cake for me. Ako muna ang paglutuan mo, kahit maliit lang, and bring it to me. Sabi niya, make me a small cake and bring it to me. Bakit? And afterward, Pag nakaluto ka na, dalhin mo sa akin yung naluto mong cake. Saka ka magluto ng para sa inyo. What was Elijah asking? Elijah was asking the first fruit of the ground meal. Elisha asked. Elijah asked for the first fruit. Punta po tayo sa Ezekiel. 44, okay? Ezekiel 44. In verse 30, the best of all first fruits of any kind. Kasi yung naunang cake na niluto ng babaeng ito, pwede nating i-consider in the time na walang wala ka. This is the best of all first fruit of any kind. And every sacrifice of any kind from all your sacrifices shall be the priest, shall be the pastors, shall be the man of God. Also, you shall give to the priest the first of your ground meal to cause a blessing to rest on your house. So, nang ginawa ng babae ito, nagluto siya, binigyan muna si Elijah ng small cake then, ang sabi ng, ng Biblia, The bean of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry, until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah, and she and he and her household ate for many days. The bean of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry 
according to the word of the Lord which he spoke by Elijah. You see, when you need a financial breakthrough, breakthrough of anything, God will demand something from us first. The story ng Elijah and the widow will tell us that when your supply is running low, when your supply is running out, that is when God tells you to give. That is when God tells you to give. Ano ba naman ta- ito si Lord? Wala na nga ako. Hihingi ang pa ba ako? I will not say anything. Pero samahan ninyo ko, 2 Corinthians chapter 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Let's start with verse 1. Moreover, brethren, are you there with me? 2 Corinthians chapter 8, we start with verse 1. Moreover, brethren, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. Alam na ninyo yung biyaya ng Diyos na ibinigay niya sa iglesia ng Macedonia. That in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberality. Paul was saying, ang simbahan sa Macedonia ay taghirap, taggutom, great trial of affliction and pero in that affliction, yung kanilang taggutom, taghirap, mayaman naman sila, umaapaw naman ni ang kanilang kagalakan na sa kanilang sobrang kahirapan, sobrang hirap nila sa kanilang trials because there is faith in them. Yung grace na binigay ni Lord sa kanila sa panahon ng kanilang affliction, God gave them the joy to dance before God. And then ang sabi pa na out of their deep poverty sa kanilang sobrang kahirapan, naging kagalakan nila, naging mayaman sila sa kanilang pagbibigay. Anong binigay nila, pastora? Ay mahirap na nga sila. Hindi ko alam. Because the word here, out of their poverty, kawalan abounded in the rich of their liberality. For I bear witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely willing. Yung kaya nilang magbigay, kaya nilang ibigay, ang sabi ni Pablo, witness ako, patutuo ko, I was there, I received the gift na out ng kanilang kawalan, sa kanilang kawalan. Tinanggap ko ang kanilang mayamang pagbibigay, yung kakayanan nila, yung kaya nilang ibigay. At sabi pa in verse 4, imploring us with much urgency that we would receive the gift and the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. Ang sabi pa ni Pablo, mahirap na ang Macedonia, pero nagbigay sila ayon sa kanilang kakayanan na hindi lamang sila nagbigay. Ang sabi pa dito na kiusap pa ang mga Macedonian na tanggapin nila Paul yung gift na ito, yung mga financial help na ito, kapalit ng fellowship nila sa pagmi-minister sa kanilang iglesia. Okay? Ang sabi ng verse 5, And not only as we had hope, but they first gave themselves to the Lord and then to us by the will of God, which means... You cannot give anything to God unless you have first learned to surrender to God. You have first learned to surrender fully to the Lord. Then you are able to give whatever the Lord has given you. And then he said, And then to us by the will of God. So we urge Titus, just as he had begun, so he would also complete the grace in you as well. Verse 7, But as you abound in everything, In faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all diligence, and in your love for us, see that you abound in this grace also. Sino kausap ni Pablo dito? He was speaking to the Corinthian church. And the Corinthians were rich people. Ang sabi ni Pablo, nagpapatutuo ko sa inyo, I just came from Macedonia. Macedonian church is a poor church. 
but they they were they they are experiencing deep poverty but in their deep poverty in their deep lack they were able to give general generously that's why i am exhorting to you corinthians people corinthian church kung paano kayo mayaman sa lahat ng bagay mayaman kayo sa pananampalataya mayaman kayo sa edukasyon mayaman kayo sa karunungan Masikap kayo, masipag kayo, at lalong mayaman ang pag-ibig ninyo sa amin na nangangaral ng Diyos. Pero hinihingi ko sa inyo, maging mayaman din sana kayo sa biyaya ng pagbibigay. Okay? Verse 8, I speak not by commandment, but I am testing the sincerity of your love by the diligence of others. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich yet for his for your sakes he became poor that you through his poverty might become rich Jesus gave his life he became poor may bahay ba si Lord dito sa earth wala Pero kung saan po ang saan siya nagpupunta he was given house place to sleep Okay? Place to sleep. Ang sabi pa rito, he, though Jesus was rich, yet alang-alang sa atin, naging mahirap siya. Not because Jesus was poor, no. Mayaman ang ating Panginoon, pero alang sa alang sa atin. Sabi pa niya, verse 10, And in this I give advice to you, Corinthian Church, it is to your advantage advantage not only to be doing what you began and were desiring to do a year ago, but now you also must complete the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to desire it, so there also may be a completion of what you have. For there first a willing mind. Dapat Willing tayo sa ating pagbibigay, it is accepted according to what one has and not according to what one does not have. Kung wala ka, wala kang ibibigay. Huwag kang mangutang, huwag kang manghiram because it will not please God. Mangungutang ka para makapagbigay ka lang? No, hindi po yon ang sinasabi ng Panginoon. Okay? Bakit? Sabi pa ni, ni Paul in verse 14, by, But by an equality that now at this time your abundance may supply their lack, that th their abundance also may supply your lack, that there may be equality. Anong sinasabi ni Pablo dito? Maaaring ngayon, napaka mayaman ka, meron ka. Ngayon, kung anong meron ka, magbigay ka para matustusan ang lack nila. Kasi darating ang panahon na sila naman din, God's gonna bless them and now you are the one in one. These people who benefited, be benefited from your gift will now become generous to you when the time comes that you are in need. That means, your offering will also, your tithe speaks to God, but your offering will speak for you. Your offering will give you your reward. As I said, when in Luke, give and it will be given to you. Good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over will men put into your bosom. Money is now in circulation in the earth. Okay? But when you perform your obligation to heaven, when you perform your obligation to heaven, God will direct finances to come to you. Money is now in circulation in the earth. But when you perform your obligation to heaven, God will direct finances to come to you. This is what Ecclesiastes said, describes transfer of wealth. 
Because right now, wealth is in the hands of the wicked. Wealth is in the hands of the wicked. What are we going to do? Because this wealth is in the hands of the wicked. We have to perform our obligations to heaven. So mga kapatid, the size of your seed matters. Because the size of your seed speaks of the health of your harvest. The size of your seed matters because the size of your seed tells us the health of your harvest. Giving, understand that giving is not by force. It is by choice. Out of the willingness of our heart. Tithing is different from first fruit. But both of them came before the law. Okay? Yung first fruit natin is a declaration that we make God you are first in my life. So, lastly, Proverbs 3 in chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, I will read the last verse that we will have for this day. Proverbs chapter 3 in verse 9. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Honor the Lord our giving is an honor to God. And as we honor God, the Lord said, My Father will honor him that honors me. When God honors us, that means God is pleased with us. And when God is pleased with us, wala po tayong maaaring mangyari sa atin kung hindi tumanggap ng biyaya sa Panginoon. Any money that come from for your consumption, any money that you receive for your consumption, tithes from it. Mga kapatid, we are to be doers of the word, not just hearers. So, anong ginawa ni David? When the whole land, nung may salot, mababasa natin sa 2 Samuel 24, nung may salot sa buong lukalupaan, Sa buong kaharian ni David, when there was a curse going on in the land, 70,000 died in one day. Okay? 70,000 died in one day. Anong ginawa ni David to stop the curse from killing people? Because the curse kills people. David redeemed the land by giving an offering to God. Okay, mababasa natin 2 Samuel 24, verses 1 to 25. Okay, so for today, sana may naintindihan po tayo tungkol sa mystery of the seed. We started with the graces of God. We first understood the mystery of the goodness of God. Pangalawa, the grace of His ability. Ngayon, the mystery of tithing. Now, the mystery of the seed, sa next meeting po natin, mystery of answered prayers. Because all of us can pray, but not all prayers are answered by the Lord. Though Paul said, God promises that in Christ, lahat ng ating hinihingi ay yes. But you know, there are prayers that remain unanswered. So today, may God, I pray, Sabihin natin as we pray to God, Lord, I am but just a pilgrim in this earth. I am just passing through. Whatever you give me on this journey, Lord God, I will be a good steward of it. Oh, Father God, I understand I am just but passing through in this world. For I know this is not my permanent home. But Lord, I pray that whatever you give me, give me the grace to be able to return to you what needs to be given to you. 
O Lord God, it is by your grace that whatever you demand, I would willingly and cheerfully give from the bottom of my heart. Out of my love for you, as my part of my worship, thank you, Father God, that my tithes, Lord, if you have your tithes with you now, raise it to the Lord, and we will pray. Father God, I thank you. Here is my tithes, and I pray, my Lord, let my tithes speak to you, Father. Prepare the way, the path for the good harvest to flow through me. Oh Lord, bless every seed that will be sown, Father, as offerings before God. Thank you for all the grace to receive from you. And thank you, dear God, for the grace to be able to give back to you. Thank you, Father God, for our life, for our good health, for every blessing that your people. Therefore, Father God, as, as I stand before you, I bless your people, Lord. I release blessing on your people, on Chelsea family, on those, Lord God, that are faithfully paying their tithes. I thank you, dear God, and I bless every seed that they have sown. And I bless, dear God, those that are live streaming with us from other shipmen, from other family, Lord God, from other church. I bless them, oh Father God, every one of them that will receive and believe this word. Oh Father God, thank you for the complete recovery of Pastor Nick, for his good health, for his strength. And Lord, good health for every Jalsi family member, for every one of us that they are, we are all in good health in Christ Jesus. For this, we believe, Father God, that you are able to do and give us and will cause all grace to abound to us. As we receive your word, we carefully give back to you, Father God, all praise and glory in Christ Jesus' wonderful name. God bless you. Amen.